Hello all, this is D-Swank, and... What's a gamer? How y'all doing today? And we're, um, doing a little bit of behind the scenes for us, for our survival series. Uh, kind of think of it like the, some of the uh, special features on a DVD. Um, we're not going to be giving away anything important to any story that may or may not develop, but we're going to give a little background on our characters. So, first up... Well, um, I was a pirate. Uh, somewhat willingly, somewhat unwillingly. Um, I spent about two years with a, for now, an unnamed band of pirates that were surprisingly nonviolent, I guess you could say. They were scavengers. They just didn't do it legally. And I found them when I escaped from my pre previous job. I was recruited while hiding out on a space station. And I spent about two years with them where I learned a lot of new skills that I otherwise didn't lose, uh, use. Excuse me. I'm already hitting the gym tonight. I didn't kind of figured we was going here tonight, but, you know. Uh, a lot more skills than I learned than I then I learned out on the uh, the junkyard where I worked with my dad. And uh, strange things started happening there. And I had to leave. And, uh, yeah, it, it, it was getting kind of crazy towards the end. It was not the group of people that I started working with. But I was a pirate, thanks to them, who will still, name, still be unnamed for tonight. Um, but we, uh, we did a lot of scavenging. We, uh, we wouldn't take lives unless it was absolutely necessary. And they're trying to contact me now. Well, <laughs> luckily our signals are kept, um... They're masked. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, uh, yeah... So, I, in those two and a half years, I'd actually done really well for myself as opposed to the job beforehand. And I ended up with my own ship and crew. I basically became the trainer, the job that my recruiter had when he recruited me. And uh, we had gotten a weird, we had gotten a real weird uh, set of orders one day. We were out cruising and direct message from the leader who was my recruiter at the time way back it was to capture raid and essentially execute everyone on board a uh, science station it was, uh, it was carrying these new nanites something that i had previous knowledge on thanks to previous job um and i knew i had to go it's that's that's not what i signed up for and uh, during one of the scheduled jumps, I got out as quick as I could, made sure to leave the moment they jumped so I could get the hell out. And that's pretty well, that's pretty where, pretty well where I started keeping my journal, stranded out in space. Okay. I find it somewhat... Humorous, because my story starts about, well, a little over two and a half years or so ago. Um, I was working for a, corp as an engineer, mid-level engineer, kind of uh, designing systems for large ships. And we had documentation disappear by one of the people in a comp competing group. And, well, I got the blame for it, somehow. Apparently I talked to somebody who was somebody in just the wrong time, and apparently 
these were very sensitive documents, and while I'm not... Well, well our, our facility was out in the edge of space, and they said, Congratulations, you're not working for us anymore. You have to leave the station in the next few hours. Um, we don't care where you go, uh, but you can't stay here. And I had no money to be able to get a ride back to Earth. So I managed to find a uh, rundown sort of landing pod thing. And they gave me some coordinates of a place that I could call home for a little bit. Turns out it was one of the... Um, um, have, you, have you ever heard of the uh, Genesis program? I think, I think it might have crossed my uh, radar once or twice, but I have no idea what the hell it is. Um, it's it's a program where they're uh, converting. It's a terraforming project ah. where they go in and they terraform planets. Um, uh, like they're using with Mars. Yes. Okay. Um, using the the original concept was basically using um, nano machines to reorganize things and build organisms and things so most of the genesis planets look fairly similar right um unfortunately it appears the one that they sent me to had a problem and um the wolves that were developed on it are hyper aggressive and were eating everything including everybody they sent there mm, lovely so i i was judged guilty of corporate espionage, told I had to leave in a short order or be um, arrested and probably exiled, probably to the same planet I ended up on. Thinking about it, they probably stole my money. They, they were going to do this to me anyway, and they just... I paid them for it. Well, I believe the technical term was custodial engineer. I was a janitor in space. But I was still in space. In fact, that was one of my greatest uh, greatest uh, inspirations. My, my greatest desire was to get into space. After years of working in the junkyard with my dad, and he and friends helped me get there. I had a friend of mine who worked with somebody. I don't even remember now. I never really came up with a lot of the names of the companies and governments and factions and all. But he was able to get my foot in the door, he said, sweeping the floors of this science vessel. But I was okay with that. I got out into space. And all the times I was able to walk the corridors, kind of look out the portholes and out on the observation deck, it was great. It was wonderful. I loved it. And the skills that I had from working in a junkyard, it was an old space junkyard. My dad was a great engineer. Um, a lot of the skills I picked up there, I could have easily applied to a lot of the lower level jobs, but because I had no paperwork saying I could do that, I was stuck with sweeping floors. That was okay. I enjoyed what I did. But some of the, some of the things out over here on that science vessel would frighten me. That's where I heard about nanites and what they could do. And it was really unnerving sometimes, but it was worth it. For the first six years until I finally got tired of it and ditched them on the first space station that I found. Hung out there until they left. And that's where I found my pirate friend. So yeah, space janitor. Well, Wolvendrake is actually a call sign I made for myself as a kid. It was kind of a nickname for myself later. It's kind of a play off my last name, uh, Wolfen. Um, see, my, my name obviously isn't fuzzy. I mean, who names their child fuzzy, right? Uh, it was Gabriel Alexander Wolfen. Eh, my dad liked to read a lot. <laughs> but... 
Yeah, Wolden Drake was a play off of a childhood call sign nickname that changed when I started working on that um, science vessel. Unfortunately, that's the one registered to my my DNA, how they do that crap now. So that will never change, but obviously fuzzy is different. And I got that from the science vessel. Despite this handsome, rugged chin, it was full of hair at one point. Uh, see, I did not make much money, and I couldn't afford razors. The electric razors, the, uh, the laser ones they provide you out there, um, yeah, they don't provide them. You have to pay for them. And you weren't allowed actual razors on deck, so I grew this massive fuzzy beard. And despite the ID'd broadcasted name, I was attached to the name Fuzzy. It kind of grew on me after a while, but anyway, that's Fuzzy. Okay. Well, for me, the... Uh... The name that uh, I usually went with was, uh, uh, of course, the name you know me by, D. Swain. That's kind of what college name came with me through uh, through school, and that's what everybody at work called me. But why I ended up using uh, Trogdor Fubar was, uh, well, the more I researched this planet that they were shipping me off to... Uh, the more I discovered it's kind of like Space Australia. They were sending a lot of people they didn't like there. A lot of people that had connections to the company. And, uh, well, mid-level, there's still some people that might know of me. And I was kind of, well, mid-level management sort of thing. Um, plus I'm not much of a um, combat type. They, uh, and most of the people that were being sent there were, like, the welders, the grinders, um, the custodial engineers, and so I changed my broadcaster jet signal, um, to, so that, well, they didn't recognize me from it. I, uh, um, a... It's locked kind of to the suit now, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's not. If I change suits, it's probably going to change. Gotcha. <sighs> I was hoping nobody actually noticed that. Um, also, it looks like you have a barcode on your forehead. Okay. Um, I didn't escape the pirates. I was abandoned. They jettisoned me. Um, when the order came through... Oh, hang on a minute. Oh. Ugh. When the order came through to take that giant science vessel, I didn't ignore it. I was too scared to try to escape, and I was way too scared to defy the people that had changed so much since I've known them. We took the vessel, and while the rest of my crewmates without hesitation took many many lives I made sure to fire above as many heads as I could I tried to wound or disarm or otherwise not kill anybody on that ship but the crew they were very efficient they came behind me and finished the job and they, they knew what I was doing they knew how I changed or rather how they had changed and I hadn't. And we took the vessel. And the massive nanite foundry that they were experimenting with. And this thing was huge. 
I mean, it wasn't anything like the foundries that you would have heard of or seen of on the science vessels that were running around. It wasn't even like the ones they were using for planet terraforming. This thing was weird, different, alien. And apparently, apparently my recruiter, my, my boss, my captain, oh, my captain, knew that I wasn't cut out for this job. I wasn't given captainhood of that ship. I was being watched to see if I could change with them. And they planned on killing me. They planned on doing it by throwing me into the Nanite Foundry as it booted up. Thing is, it didn't kill me. It changed me. And when it initially changed me, the things I was saying, the things I was doing, the massive amounts of energy that I was projecting as I walked out of that foundry frightened them enough to get the hell out of Dodge. I was weak, I was frightened, the energy was dissipating, I was in pain. I got to the nearest ejection pod that I could get to, and here I am today. And there is the truth behind Fuzzy, and I am going to get another drink. Excuse me. Uh, well, that's kind of a long story. Um, well, I, I told you about how the wolves were, um, nasty, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, I managed to throw together something to get me off, uh, off the rock. And then I found a, an asteroid in low orbit around the, the Earth-like planet. And I set up base, and then I found this amazing ship that was parked beside a automated pirate station, so I'm thinking somebody just left it there, or maybe they were down on the planet seeing what they could find. Whatever. Um, I managed to take out the station, steal the ship, run away. And as time went on, I started finding other ships and welding them onto the other ship and got big and bulky and ungainly. So I was going to rebuild it and I stopped in orbit on a just a desert barren planet that had a, a moon, landed on the moon, and was going to be going down to get ice and materials off of the the planet we were orbiting. And I had, through my travels, found transporters. And I used the transporter. And it, the first one took me from the, the, the moon to um, the, the, my first relay station. And then the next one, when I, everything happened white beads, all the normal stuff you associate with them. And I... When I appeared, one, there was gravity. Two, there was fire. And I got out of the teleporter. And I was on that hell of a planet in what looked like an old base, military base. Huh. And I found some supplies and started to explore and those spider things started swarming the base just like they somehow knew I was there so I rushed and put down found some fuel uh, found a truck that had that tank on the trailer and jumped through fuel in the truck took off and I started driving along and eventually I, f I heard um you, you realize your journals early on, you were just open broadcast, right? Uh, no, I was not aware of that, actually. Well, uh, it, it took me a while to start, uh, well, I picked them up 
a couple days before I found you, I was able to kind of triangulate where you were um, from your broadcast. And the, the, and the bugs constantly swarmed the truck every time I stopped. It took three days. Have you ever gone, one, driving for three days, not stopping? That is horrendous. Because if I stopped, the bugs would swarm. And eventually they, the, the truck ran out of fuel and I was able to get into the tank and leave and the, the bugs ate the truck. And I was able to limp on what I had left over to where you were. So, it was not pleasant. No, I imagine not. How, thinking of that, why did you choose to land on that planet? I didn't choose. Um, pirate friends of mine called up to it, called up to me. Shortly after building the uh, the dead leaves and the dark heresy, and I decided to get a little revenge on them, you know. So I started going after some of their stations and ships. Well, I wasn't that great of an engineer, and my ship didn't exactly last, and I was forced to land there. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, uh... well, it might be a good thing that we got out of there when we did then. Yeah. We were making a pretty good presence there in that system. Just a touch. Yeah. I think that's pretty much all the questions we have for us to answer. Um, I want to thank everybody who sent some in. And um, I guess we will be back to uh, the normal episodes next week. So... I hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll see you then. Until then, bye bye The goo will consume us all. Okay, good night, everybody. <laughs> good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh.